Boom Supersonic towards the back end of 2022 announced new engine partners and strategic partnerships that included several companies. However, before that, Rolls-Royce was touted as the one that would likely work with Boom to provide an engine for the Overture. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, over 70% of you are yet to do so. Rolls-Royce announced, though, that they were no longer working with Boom Supersonic last year, stated in a release. After careful consideration, Rolls-Royce has determined that the commercial aviation supersonic market is not currently a priority for us, and therefore will not pursue further work on the program at this time. It has been a pleasure to work with Boom, and we wish them every success in the future. A decision to leave on Rolls-Royce's part came following, of course, a thorough review of the business, not just their own, but also Boom Supersonics. Ultimately, there were several factors, and that's what will be explored here. First, and one of the biggest, that is still a significant problem for Boom, despite their claims, is the lack of demand for supersonic travel. Boom says that demand is there, and that they expect hundreds upon hundreds of overtures to fly worldwide. However, other analysts alongside significant aviation companies have expressed their concerns over these claims. They believe that there is genuinely not enough airlines in need of a supersonic aircraft to suffice, say, a market. While demand can equally be a problem, the costs associated with the program may also deter potential airlines, alongside in this case Rolls-Royce, from continuing to invest in such a program. While Boom has many claims for its overture, these will all be challenging to reach with current technology. It is also going to come with quite a hefty price tag, one that could easily be argued is not currently in Boom's balance. Rolls-Royce is an intelligent company, and no doubt can see the costs continuing to climb for such a business. However, as an engine manufacturer and broader company, you must start prioritizing what you believe you will excel in and what will be a first choice in the market for decades to come. Investing time and resources into an unproven program that may very well never eventuate has severe risks, and Rolls-Royce have done it before, but it is still one of the biggest reasons why several other engine manufacturers very clearly denied any interest in supporting Boom Supersonic, identifying some of the critical risks that I've already mentioned, amongst others. Certification of equipment in the aerospace industry is no easy feat. In fact, following the 737 MAX crisis from 2019 onwards, you could make the argument that the strictness has only risen. Aircraft manufacturers like your Airbus and Boeing are finding it already difficult to certify their upcoming aircraft with the A321 XLR and the 777X impacted respectively. It only highlights how these proven aircraft manufacturers, without even a clean sheet design, are incurring the same delays. One can therefore only imagine the certification challenges of an unproven company utilizing supersonic technology. It's a challenge unlike any other. One though, Boom has made it the very least clear that they're more than aware of. Another question is whether they can get it cleared, have the technology fully functional and still have enough money. Although thus far, they've done quite a good job at keeping investor money rolling in. However, as analysts covering the program have identified, they still need a sizable amount of money, which they do not have yet, and certainly are nowhere near. For Rolls-Royce, the challenges to certify the program and also the engine may have been a factor in why they left Boom. Dealing with the Federal Aviation Administration, more commonly referred to as simply the FAA, and the European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, does present difficulties. It's a lengthy but also costly process, and as we've discussed throughout this video, a supersonic aircraft is not your typical airliner. Hence, case in point, it provides more challenges for Rolls-Royce over, say, something else. If Boom can get the plane in the sky, many people also have concerns over how profitable it would be for the airlines operating. While now, as the company, they aren't making money, at some point they need returns on their investments. At the same time, high-end business travelers are at the forefront of their business model and should greatly benefit from Overture. It must be said though, we have seen changes in how business is conducted. Benefits do exist, don't get us wrong there. However, questions surround the demand and also the economic benefits for whatever customer is going to take delivery of such a plane as well eventually. To conclude, Rolls-Royce decision to end its partnership 
with Boom Supersonic was something many may have seen coming. But one thing it does reflect is the challenges and uncertainties surrounding Supersonic Travel's development, but also, more importantly, commercial viability. This is something many around the globe can usher. We were fortunate enough to have seen the Concorde fly. However, the future of aviation is still up in the air with no pun intended, and Supersonic may very well not have a place. From certification to the costs, economic viability, and priorities within a company like Rolls-Royce, several contributing factors led to Rolls-Royce ending their partnership with Boom Supersonic. If you have any thoughts on, of course, the partnership, do let us know down below in the comments as well as the future of Boom Supersonic. Will they actually get the plane up in the air? Let us know. Thank you very much for watching a video here on Globetrotting. Stay tuned in the coming days for more analysis content to feature.